Alright, welcome everyone in this last video tutorial about Unreal 4 and multiplayer lobby. That was a really intense two days that I passed doing that to do that tutorial series. So we are going to review here how to expand from that tutorial and from what I've made you do. So I'm going to take my little paper right there and we're going to talk about a little bit about teams number of the a maximum number of players when you create a game we'll be talking a bit about game mods about save game objects and about keeping information about players through the different levels and so we're going to open up that project real quick i'm going to open up that content brother and We'll be talking about teams. That's basically in the outgame menu. Let's open up our outgame menu. Well, for now, we're clicking on colors. And when we're clicking on colors, it says update button color. And here, we are basically pass passing a, a linear color structure. But you could be passing an enum. So, like we did for. So, I'm opening up my content browser utilities we made an enum that says basically i'm going to duplicate that we made an enum that says hey what window am i focusing we you could make another enum that says hey what team am i am i red or uh, am i blue for instance and there you could pass that enum here and all the way to the game instance and save that value in the net player list so you would be creating creating more player informations here of the type of the enum you just created so you could store that, inf that information and use that information afterwards to do stuff like i'm going to open our players real quick to do a little stuff real quick when you are when you are when we are creating our else bar for players when we are in game we are going to do a little check of the player color get the color of the player i'm looping through is that color the same than mine why can't i say equals break linear color so we are going to get our own color get my color and if break that color well i can just can i just say equals that color equals that one that's kind of unfair i feel so if my red equals my red here that means that guy is of the same color than i so if he is we ain't we are not going to do anything but if he's not, we're going to tell his else bar. So get color and opacity. We're going to say his else bar is will be red instead than will be red instead than uh, instead than green like he is for now. So I'm going to hit compile and save. I'm going to check how it goes in game. So I'm going, going to create, I'm going to host a multiplayer game to join that game with that player. That guy is red and that guy is going to join. I, ho I hope he's going to be of the color I just said. So he's going to hit ready, that one as well. We're going to start the game. And they should be of different colors, and their else bar will be different, I suppose. So, is it going to work? Yep. So, ah, I think I made a mistake with the color, the color I set on the else bar. So, I think that's not what you're supposed to be setting on that else bar. So, I'm going to open up that player widget that progress bar, get progress bar 101, get progress bar 101, 
set color, set fill color and opacity. That's what we want to do instead of set color and opacity over the, the whole widget. So we want that progress bar to be red if we are not of the same color than our players. So I'm going to hit play. I'm going to host a multiplayer that all players are going to join. I'm going to browse. I will do three teams. I hope that's going to work perfectly. So all players are, jo are joining. I'm going to do two blue guys and one yellow guy. All players are going to be ready. That one as well. Start the game. And we are supposed to have three players seeing them in green, seeing themselves th their own color in green. I mean their own ba bar else bar in green so oh there there are some oh actually i think that's working well these two players see themselves as the same team because i just checked the the red the red part of the of the color you know what i mean but they're supposed to be enemy if I, if i do the whole color check here they will be enemies so I quickly created enemies just by doing that. So I'm going to let that here. So that's how you can expand on enemy. Then you can keep track of who is an enemy because here that basically says, hey, that player gets the player you're dragging here. If you had something here, that player is an enemy. So how can you expand on the on adding more options to the outgame menu when you create so I'm opening up our outgame menu and I will hide that and I will open up the create game box so here we are basically having one text box where the player can enter can enter uh, an option uh, a name of Option, an optional name, excuse me, but you could have several stuff like like I said when we were doing the tutorials you could you could have a scroll box, you could have uh, another box like that that is used to put the number the maximum number of players and basically when you would be hitting that create button, so when we host the game, you will pass more parameters into that into that event like what's the max number of players and stuff like that the things you you mentioned the things you created there and that will you will pass that all the way to the game instance and here you have public connections and private connections and you could pass the number the maximum number of player here you could pass the game mode as a key here as an additional pin to display it when players are getting the servers you could pass the the fact that you're using lan or not in here because if you're using truly using an online server if you're using line lan it won't work you will be you won't be able to find sessions so that's how you can expand the probability the pro the creation the create game properties so saving stuff over the player adding stuff to save on the player profile it's quite easy you just have to open our to open up our save game so our save game i created our save game in my system i believe top down save game so open up your save game and here you can just add any variable you want and save that on the player main profile stuff like uh, what are what are his what are his um, sorry graphic settings what are his sh shortcuts stuff like that his main characters the the game is saved and stuff like that so you you can add any amount of variable here just make sure to set them like we set the name of the player the client connects the clients the button connects to a, a custom event on the clients and the clients sto store that in uh, his save game instance in save his save game not the game instance his save game 
So keeping information about players along the levels will be done by using the structure we've built. So basically, I'm going to delete the thing, the, the enum I created before. So we made a structure player information that holds the player color, the player net ID, and you can add any number of variables that will hold information that you want to keep in between levels, like what's the score of the players, how many gold they found in the level if you're moving on another level, maybe you want to keep track of that, and, and stuff like that, I don't know. But if you want to add more information and to keep them and that you information that you need to keep track of them be in between levels, that's where you add them. And then you can access them like we access them when we're when we've been storing information on the game instance. Uh, I'm going to review to find the game instance real quick. You can add information on, on that structure using the same way than we did. Where did we did that? I'm sorry. On our out game controller, maybe. So out game controller, not my game state, my controller. And yep, like that. Here we're storing an information of color in the in the net player list. So if you add any structure, doesn't like to be manipulated like I just did, adding adding stuff and removing stuff, changing the name of structures, moving them along. You, the structures don't like that. Structures are very breakable, easily break, easy, easily break, easily broke, excuse me. So you don't want to do too much manipulation on them once you've already implement, implemented them to your code. But adding, just adding parameters, I believe it's going to, is going to be okay. So that's how you can handle it from persistent information. So that was basically it for that video. That's how you can expand from that tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed that video and I hope you guys enjoyed the whole series of tutorials. It's been tough. I know it's been really intense for me. I've went very fast, but I think you can handle that. I kind of knew to do so actually, <laughs> but I think, uh, I think we're good. I think uh, it, it's going to work in the future. I might not do tutorials before a long time because I will be very busy. That's why I rushed that thing. But I, it was a very pleasing moment for me as well. And I hope to see you guys in future videos. Bye bye.